What's up, Clever Geocache Hiders? This is Eddie of Fruity Clan here, and today I am going to show you my geo bag. My bag has a lot of stuff in it that you may not need if you are not a hider. So we're going to start on the outside. So first and foremost, I have a stamp. So I use this to log most of my finds. It's a really small stamp. It's about half inch by half inch in size. And I purposely made that as small as possible so I could even get, get that on little tiny nano logs, okay? So this is a really cool idea. A part of a clipboard. A lot of times you'll come across logs that are just really cumbersome. You have to roll them out, they roll back in, you don't have a hard surface. And uh, writing on the screen of my phone is not always the best idea. So little teeny clipboard, it comes in handy. Probably the number one thing you have to have with you is a new cacher. Got to have pens. Also a really good idea, I just got my hand sanitizer here. Just a good Swiss Army knife. So here I got, what, 10, 15 tools. Um, I just put a cache out that required a Phillips screwdriver recently. Um, this has all kinds of wire cutters and knives and whatever. So just a really good thing to have. Don't have to break the bank on this, it's just something I had around. So a good multi-tool is a really, really good idea. Um, also I have to go along with that hand sanitizer is they sell these really small bug sprays, which works really good, slides right in. Just in case you're walking out in a field or late at night with the mosquitoes, super duper handy. So the next item in my bag is a dedicated GPS unit. This one I've had for a really long time. It's a Garmin 60 CSX. So pretty old. It's about seven, eight years old, I think. This is always good as a backup. Say I was out in the woods and the signal wasn't good on my phone or I ran out of power on my phone. I could always type in the coordinates kind of manually into this or I would have the coordinates Hopefully if I'm going to a place where I think my cell phone might cut out, I would have already preloaded them on. It's good just as an, as an emergency, being able to find your way around. You can mark your car, whatever. Uh, I just use it as emergencies, but the number one use I use this for is I use it for all of my hide coordinates. I don't use my phone for that, I use this. Um, so a little bit more accurate than a phone and can reach through those trees and get a signal a little bit better. So definitely have a backup GPS. You might wanna wait until you've done geocaching a little while and you start getting into hiding before you invest in one of those. So that's everything on the outside of my bag. So a couple flashlights. I didn't know they made uh, power bank flashlights, so pretty cool. So this one, is charged by uh, USB. It has a solar panel on it to keep it charged. And also, it has a USB connector on it. So if my phone is totally out and I can't get that geocache I'm looking for, I plug it in, plug this into my phone, and I get a little extra charge, which is just awesome. This one that I found also has like a panic button. All right, that's enough of that. And some other cool things on it that I just thought were, were kind of cool. And if I have this in my car, it might be kind of cool too. So this has a hammer on it for, break, for breaking a window in an emergency. And this little cutter right here that you can't actually cut your finger on, which is awesome, is for cutting a seatbelt. So you run the seatbelt through it. So couple extra things that are kind of cool. It's kind of like an emergency flashlight and it works really, really, really good. Has about five or six different lighting modes on there. This is another flashlight, um, but the coolest thing about it is on one side, it's got a magnet and a telescope's out. So it's also got a gooseneck on it. So if you need to get behind something and look, you can do that. There's also a magnet around the top of the light there. So magnets on both sides, um, has a little clip on the side. You can clip that wherever. Just this, another version of the flashlight. There's the power bank and there's the reaching flashlight. 
So, um, also in that same bag with the cord, I just have a pair of gloves just in case there's something just a little too gross to handle. Um, I keep those along with me. Um, it's always a good idea to be picking up um, trash when you can that are, that's near a cache or on your way to a cache. Um, so I would carry um, a bigger bag than this one and use that to go ahead and carry that trash out. So I have this, this little bag. So now we're getting into my maintenance stuff, which may be a little um, overboard for what you want to do, but I have a variety of things here. So little pill container that has some screws in it, um, some clips, a paper clip, some things like that that I might need. This was something I, uh, I made, really, really strong twine, and I just put it on a PVC so I could wrap it around um, just in case you come to like a post cache or something that requires like a magnet or something like that. Um, there's about eight feet of twine on here. So I would be able to attach whatever I wanted to on this end and be able to fish that out without having to come back another day with a different tool. Um, also, I have like a few zip ties in here. You never know when you're going to need those. Um, a little bag that just has like odds and ends. I have an eyelid in there, a couple magnets, a couple of rings, a metal plate. So all these things are kind of more maintenance and like building a cache on the fly sort of things. There's those tweezers we talked about earlier. So a good pair of tweezers is essential. So these I got when I replaced the battery in my phone, super tiny little edge on there. So perfect for those little nano logs, okay? So moving on, I've got some, some little cue cards here, brightly colored paper for replacing logs, some super glue, always need super glue. Sometimes you'll come across a cache that is supposed to have a magnet on it, but the magnet fell off. You can super glue that on there real quick. Here's just some cache containers. So inside of a larger container, I have some bison tubes, some nanos, um, just some little, little tiny ones to replace if I happen to know exactly what has gone missing. And we have a test tube with a log in it and a chapstick container, a clean chapstick container with that really cool feature of being able to push the log up and down. I think that's super cool. So just um, a variety of containers based upon what might be out there and what I might need to repair. So if you're a big hider like me, you might want to have a kit like that or even just a little Ziploc bag is good enough. Um, in the front here, I have some write in rain paper. Okay, so this is a uh, special waterproof paper. Usually you find them like a REI or like in a backpacking store. And it's really high quality, thick paper for replacing logs. Okay. Um, also in here, I have some other ways to attach, reattach things. Um, so I've got a magnet strip, like double-sided magnet. I have some electrical tape and some wire. Okay, just in case you need a put another uh, hook on a hanger. Um, so those are always good. And then one of the last things I have in here, I have a measuring tape. And the reason I have that is because a lot of times I will be searching for a cache and then I'll get an idea about the area. I'll really like the area and I'll want to put one of my own caches in that area. But just taking a picture of where I might want to put my cache isn't quite enough information. So what I'll do is like if there's a, for instance, a container that has to fit inside of a pipe or something like that, I'll have my measuring tape and I'll be able to measure exactly what the parameters are, um, keep that information and go back to my workshop and start building that and not have to come out and visit uh, multiple times in order to uh, get that new high dialed in. What else we got in here? So that's pretty much it, except for the hidden compartment. 
So I have a small first aid kit, really good for unwanted cuts and scrapes. And in my final pouch here, I have more paper. Okay, so this is just standard paper. Um, really good, I can use this as kind of a, a notebook too, if I'm doing a multi-cache and I need to write down some coordinates. Another little notebook that I kind of tore out of a bigger notebook. And then in this little bag here, I've got all different kinds of log baggies, okay? So little tiny ones, even smaller ones, and big sandwich, whoop, big sandwich size ones. So those I would say are really, really, really important. Really help the cash owners out when you tell them, hey, I found your cash, it was great, but it was missing a bag or it was missing a log and I replaced that for you. So that's super awesome. I think that's it. That's it. So that is my tool bag. A uh, lot of stuff in there. I usually just keep this in my car. I don't carry this with me unless I'm getting out and maybe if I'm planning on getting 10, 15, 20 caches in, in a single walk, I'll take it with me. Um, otherwise, I'll just keep it in my car and I can go back to it. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time. Subscribe, like, comment. I'd love to hear what uh, you have in your geocaching bag and keep placing those clever geocache hides. Oh, what's up geocache? This is just a, a pair of uh, and big sandwich. I have my stamp when I don't feel like signing my entire name. I got this idea from uh, uh, the, um, getting a little dirty on my cash runs. Have a great day.